everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Stormfish OS. This was actually submitted to me from a viewer of the channel. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you enjoy the channel and like the videos that we do, you can become a member to the channel right here on YouTube. You can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Now, like I said, this was submitted to me by a viewer. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. You can download it from sourceforge.net slash projects slash stormfish OS. Now, he also sent me some notes on it. A lot of work has gone on under the hood to make it faster. And he's also added WSDD and activated and installed Samba shares and cups, HPLIP graphic user interface, and he's made a few other tweaks. He's installed what he felt the regular user would want, as well as maybe a college student. Now, you will see two scripts. Let me close out of this. You'll see two scripts right up here. Wgetem, which is a front end for the Wget downloader, and then Calendars. It's a short-term calendar and timer reminder. And to install it, all you'd have to do is click on the little green alien head down here. Now, he did build it in Wolfland Builder, and he fixed it and set it up to make backup ISOs, so that leaves it intact. So if a person wants to make a respin of this, they can do it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now, the first thing right off the bat, I really enjoy this background. I think it's beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and right-click and see what kind of choices we have on backgrounds. And I do like the fact that we've got three different backgrounds, and they're very different. Let's go ahead and apply that one. That's a good-looking background as well. Let's try this one. And that is a good-looking background as well. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Now, what I do like about it, don't get me wrong, I do like distributions that come with a lot of wallpapers out of the box, but sometimes... Some of them just have too many. I like the fact that you get three really nice wallpapers right here, and you pretty much have the control to download what you want and add it to the system yourself, which I think is a plus sometimes. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now, it is a KDE environment, so you have one panel on the bottom. Of course, you got show desktops, date and time, internet, most recent device on USB, volume, there's your HP LIP status service. It's up and running, so you need to use a printer or a scanner of some kind. You're good to go there. Display configuration and then weather. I'm going to go ahead and click on weather. Let's right-click and configure it and change it because it's set up for Tampa. I'm going to go ahead and choose. I'm going to go NOAA and put in Dallas, Texas, and apply. So that's set up. Now you can right-click on the panel if you want to edit the panel. Let's go ahead and enter edit mode. I'm going to make it just a little bigger. I like the way it is out of the box, but with me doing the review, I want you all to be able to see it on your screen. So I'm going to leave it there. Go ahead and show you that you do have more options over here. You can do a panel alignment from left, center, or right. And then, of course, visibility is always visible. Auto hide, windows can cover, windows go below, and then your opacity. So we will close out of more options. And then if you wanted to add widgets, you could do that over here. I'm not going to really get into it. I've covered this quite a few times. So you're familiar with it. And if you want different widgets than what's listed here, all you got to do is go up here and get new widgets. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Now on the left side of the panel, you've got the Discover Software Center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And Discover Software Center is a pretty easy application to use. You've got application, application add-ons, Plasma add-ons, and then down here, installed settings about and updates. Right now, you have 45 updates. Because we are in VirtualBox, I will not be running that. But you can come up here, and you can see that you have a lot of popular software titles, Krita, Digicam, KTorrent. So you can pretty much find everything that you might want to install. And then, of course, you have a search bar up here. So I'm going to try search for something like OBS. Go ahead and hit Enter. There's your OBS Studio. All you'd have to do is slip on over here, install it from Flatpak, and you would have it on your system. And you do that with pretty much any application or software you want to add. Something like Caden Live. And there's Caden Live right there. You can install it from a flat pack and be good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. System settings. Let's go ahead and open that up. Let's go ahead and move that to the center of the screen. Right now you can have a choice between a light theme and a dark theme. We are presently on dark. I'm going to leave that there. It's set for double click to open. I'm going to leave that. You can go over here to Appearance, and if you want to adjust your appearance, you can. Right now, the theme we're using is the Manjaro Cyan Global, which I like, so I'm going to leave that up. But if for some reason you do not like it, you can always go over here to Get New Global Theme. Go up to Recent and check Highest Rated. Then it will give you the highest rated. Pick one that you like. Click on Install. Once that's done, you can close. Come over here, select it, then Apply. Then you have a new global theme across your system. 
You can also do that with application style, plasma style, colors, windows decorations, fonts. Now on fonts, you can completely change the font for the whole system if you want to. I'm going to leave it at what it's at. But what I am going to do is go ahead and bump that size up a little bit. I'm going to change it from 10 to 12. Click OK and apply. And the fonts change across your system. So it makes it a little bigger and easier to see. Then you can also adjust icons, cursors, splash screens, things like that. And then on settings, you also have workspace behavior, window management, shortcuts, startup shutdown, search, notification, regional settings, applications, backups. Literally, as many times as I've looked at KDE on this channel, there are thousands of ways to customize the OS to make it look and feel and act the way you want it to. We're going to go down here to look at About System. When you pull that up, we're running the most recent version of KDE Plasma, 5.23.2. KDE Frameworks is 5.87. Kernel version is 5.11.0-38. Now, that's going to be a little older kernel for the simple fact that we're running in a stable environment. I think... The most recent kernels, like a 5.15 release candidate, but this kernel is pretty solid and it's going to recognize most of your hardware and run pretty smooth for you. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of system settings, come down to Dolphin File Manager. Let's open that up. And I really do love this theme. It makes everything look really clean, makes everything look really professional. Now over here, you've got your usual suspects. And just like always, if there's things over here that you don't want, you can, of course, hide them. Like recents, I never keep recents, so what I'm going to do is right-click and hide it. And go ahead and come to this open area down here, right-click, and make my icons just a little bigger. There we go. Makes it easier to see. And then over here, you've got your home folders. Dolphin, I like it. It's pretty lightweight. It's fast. It lets you get work done and stays out of your way. One feature I do like about it is the split. Let's say you download a bunch of files, and you need to transfer them to different folders. You can just come over here to split. Go to your downloads folders, grab them files, put them where they need to go. It makes moving them a lot easier than if you couldn't do that. So let's go ahead and close out of that. That is your Dolphin file manager. Let's come down and go ahead and check out the terminal. What I want to check out real quick on the terminal, let's make it full screen. It says Stormfish OS Virtual Box, of course, 5.11 kernel. We just saw that. Resolution, Breeze Light theme, terminal font. I'm going to see if it has HTOP installed, and it does out of the box. At present, I have three gigabytes of RAM issued to this virtual machine. We are at rest using about two gigabytes, but you do have to understand that I'm running in a virtual machine. So a lot of the OS is running out of RAM. So once you install it and put it on your system, it is, of course, going to be a lot lighter than that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out a terminal. Come down, we have Firefox. You have Synaptic Package Manager. So this is the second way that you can install software and applications onto your system. And once it's refreshed, You've got a bunch of categories over here. You've got everything from amateur radio all the way down to GNOME desktop, JavaScript, KDE desktop. There's just so many different categories that you can download software from. And if you don't want to go by category, all you got to do is come over to search, put in something like OBS, hit enter. And you can see over here, OBS is now highlighted. And if you go to the right, OBS Studio is right there. To install it, all you'd have to do is click, mark for installation, and it'll let you know what dependencies are required for it to install. You mark those as well. And then come up here, click apply, and it would install OBS Studio and all the dependencies necessary to make it run on your system. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. And then you come back down, you've got the green alien, which is where you install Stormfish. Now we're going to come over to the app launcher. And up here, you've got development, you've got your icon browser, you've got graphics, blue recorder, document scanner, GwynView, Ocular, Xsane, which is your image scanning program. Internet, you've got Deluge, which is your BitTorrent client, Firefox. Then you have KDE Connect. If you're not familiar with KDE Connect, it's a way to sync your smartphone with your PC. Now, whether you're on Android or Apple, you can download these applications from either the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store. Once they are installed, you can sync it up to your laptop or PC, and you will be able to check messages, see missed phone calls. I even use it as a remote control for some of the programs that are on my system, so... It's definitely something to take a look at. Then down to multimedia, you've got MPV Media Player, VLC Media Player, Office, you've got Ocular, PDF SAM, and then HP Fax Utility and HP Fax Address Book. Then you've got Settings, Wolfland Builder, we already spoke about that, Synaptic Package Manager, and then System, you've got Bleachbit, Discover, Dolphin, HTOP, Info Center, Install Release, K Wallet, USB Flasher, and that is pretty much it. And then Power Shutdown. 
and restart. For a respin, I think this is a very good looking operating system. Let me know what you think. Is it something you might download? Throw on a USB, put in a virtual box, and give it a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Before you leave today, do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. Doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you enjoy the channel and like the videos that we produce, you can become a member to eBuzz Central right here on YouTube, or you can buy us a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.